Hello and welcome to this video on using the discriminant. So first of all, the discriminant is something that's given to you in the formula page of your exam. And we need to remember that it's represented by b squared minus 4ac, where a, b and c are coefficients of x squared x and the term independent of x in any quadratic equation. So in this case, a would be k, that's the coefficient of x squared, b would be negative 3, so important just to remember that negative is part of that coefficient, and c would be k. Now how are we going to use the discriminant to help us here? Well, we're told to find the value of k for which this equation here has real roots. So that means that this equation will cross or maybe just touch the x-axis. That's what it means to have real roots. And in that case, the, the condition on the discriminant is that it is greater than or in fact equal to zero. And basically, we just want to avoid the discriminant being negative. If it's less than zero, then we have no real roots. But we want it to be either equal to zero or in fact greater than zero. So let's see what we can do here. I think we should write down that we know for real roots, we know the condition on the discriminant, we know that b squared minus 4ac needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And then we can start filling in our values. We know that b was negative three, so here's negative three which needs to be squared. Now, be careful here, make sure that it is negative three that you're squaring and not squaring three and making it negative, which is a different thing. Negative three squared is nine. And just if you're using a calculator with negatives in here, make sure that you use brackets or you will end up with the wrong answer. Four lots of A means four lots of K multiplied by another K. So A was K and C was K. So we've got a couple of Ks multiplying together there. All of that greater than or equal to zero. And as I said, negative three squared is nine and negative four multiplied by k multiplied by k gives us negative four k squared here. And again, we've got this inequality. Now it's turned into a quadratic inequality because of this k squared term. And one thing we can do to try and solve it here is indeed subtract nine from both sides which creates this. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, well, I can see we've got negatives on both sides. I've got negative four K squared and really I want K squared on its own. So we can divide both sides of this inequality by negative four, but there's something that you must remember when you divide an inequality by a negative value, then the direction of the inequality operator will change. And we end up with positive k squared is less than or equal to 9 over 4. So I've divided both sides by negative 4. Uh, negative 9 divided by negative 4 gives us a positive 9 over 4. And that inequality operator has changed to face the opposite way. Now, one way of successfully solving quadratic inequalities like this one is actually to consider a little graph. And you'll see why this makes sense in a moment. So let's draw ourselves a set of axes as best we can. Here is a y-axis, and then let's get a, an x-axis on here. Only in this case, it's not actually an x-axis, it's a k-axis, because our little equation involves k, or our inequality involves k. And so what we want to do is think, what would the graph of y equals k squared look like? So if we were to draw the graph of y equals k squared, well, it is just a classic parabola that crosses or touches at the origin. So y equals k squared looks like this. There we go. And we want to think, when is this graph less than or equal to 9 over 4? So 9 over 4 is going to have to be somewhere on our graph. Let's just imagine that 9 over 4 is this line here. So that point here is 9 quarters up the y-axis. And we're asking ourselves, when is this graph less than 9 over 4. Well, that happens on all of these sections of the graph underneath 9 over 4. So all of this stuff that's been shaded in yellow here, 
the graph is less than nine quarters or nine over four. And what we really want are the k values that correspond to all of those points. So that means we want all the k values between here and here, all of these k values, whatever they are, those are the values that give us a bit of graph that is less than nine over four. So where are these left and right bounds? Well, if k squared was equal to nine over four, let's just solve that as a little equation on the side here, k squared was actually equal to nine over four, then we would solve this by taking the square root of both sides. Now don't forget there's a positive and negative square root when we're doing this. So we get plus and minus. Now the square root of nine over four, well the way to square root a fraction is to square root the numerator and then square root the denominator. So we end up with positive and negative three over two, which means these points over here must be negative three over two, and this would be positive three over two. So we've actually solved that little quadratic as an, as an equation to get these points. Now we need to actually answer our inequality. When is k squared less than or equal to nine over four? Well, it's all of the k values between negative three over two and positive three over two, and it includes the values of negative three over two and three over two for the reason that we were less than or equal to nine over four. So how do we write our answer? Finally, we want to write it using inequality notation, and that means negative three over two is less than or equal to k, which is again less than or equal to positive three over two. So that gives us all the k values in between and including negative three over two and three over two. And if k was any of those numbers in that range, then if we put it into these spaces here in the equation, then we would have a quadratic with real roots.